Hi, Magali. Thank you so Hi. much for joining me today. I know that we here at Imagine Products are very happy to have the opportunity to talk to you today. I know that when you reached out regarding the International Film Festival for Conch Shell Production, I was very interested and we as a company were very interested in learning more about it. So what was, where did the idea for the International Film Festival first come from? Actually, when I founded Conch Shell Productions, I'm a television actress. So the medium, film, I love it. I love the stage. We produce a lot of work, a lot of theatrical pieces, new works. But my mission was to create a space both, both for the theater maker and the filmmaker because our voices are completely underrepresented in both milieu. So the question of do we do a film festival or do we not do a film festival was a matter of funding. And feasibility in terms of rental spaces, blah, 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 then came COVID-19. So we were founded in 2019. So our company is very young. And 2019 and 2020, we presented festivals of new works by Caribbean writers, both as um, completed works, full productions and readings. Then with COVID-19, we all went the, uh, on the internet everything was virtual and I discovered filmocracy.com and the concept of founding our film festival finally was feasible. They are one of our industry sponsors. They gave us a really good deal to use their platform. And I said, okay, let's do this. And let me tell you, last year was magical. It was magical because I knew there was a need in my heart, but when I met the filmmakers and heard how excited they were to have this space, how there's a dearth of opportunity for their voices to be heard on an international platform, I knew I was doing the right thing for my community of artists. And we're talking That's about amazing. 28 nations. We're not talking about one nation in particular, but the whole Caribbean diaspora and the Caribbean. Because not only do we share pieces that are written and directed by people of the Caribbean diaspora, which means anyone of Caribbean ancestry living anywhere on the planet, because that's what we're focused on on this planet. Maybe someday Mars, who knows? <laughs> um, but also people of the Caribbean, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is our second year. And weekly we do a posting highlighting a Caribbean diaspora, Caribbean filmmaker. And every week I'm always surprised to find out this person is of Caribbean ancestry. Wow. It's just exciting I'm to share sure the yeah. fact that we're there. Because, you know, I'm a first generation Haitian American and most first generation people, the parents are like, be doctor, be lawyer, be engineer, be business person. Hello, <laughs> don't be anything else. So to find people like me or even people who have been here many generations who said, and even people in the Caribbean who are saying, I want to be an artist. I don't want to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, business person. It's yeah. I Magical. definitely understand that. I That was something that I wanted to ask you is as a first generation American, it can be very hard to take that step and step out of the boundaries that have been placed for us since the beginning. What made you personally take that step and say, no, I'm going into the film industry no matter what? It was hard. I was supposed to be a doctor. I went to Columbia university, um, graduated and realized I don't want to be a doctor. So the expectation was lawyer, business person. But I've been in love with acting since elementary school, and it was a secret love. But after I graduated from college, it became, I came out the closet. I love acting, which really kind of threw my family for a tizzy. But at that time, my journey was still informed by you got to be practical, you got to have a full time regular job, and maybe on the side. 
It's a game. It's a, it's, it's not a career. And it wasn't until I got my MBA. <laughs> I did do it. And I moved to Chicago and I found that community of artists and said, no, I am an artist. And so <laughs> after that, hundred percent jumped in, I went to Yale school of drama. And after I graduated, I've been acting since. I love that. I, I love yeah. That. I've been I, writing since I was in grad school and directing and I continued writing and directing as well as acting after I graduated. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, speaking of your uh, writing, I know that the screenplays that you write have been inspired uh, about like personal stories from you and your loved ones. How is it being able to bring your culture and your upbringing to life through your writing? Absolutely necessary. Um, while I was at Yale, I was fortunate enough to get a fellowship when I graduated, the Fox Fellowship. And the purpose of the fellowship was for me to go to Europe because I was like, there has to be a writer out there who's writing from a Caribbean diaspora viewpoint. And I hadn't seen anything like that. I'd been working on works written by African Americans, by African writers. And I was like, what about the Caribbean diaspora? Went to London. Oh my God. That's where I found my feet. Because I've always been writing stories featuring characters of Caribbean, Haitian American heritage. But then to find in London, you had Jamaican Brits, you had Nigerian Brits, you had Pakistani Brits, you had you had all these different Brits from all these colonized countries writing plays from their perspectives. And I was like, yes, <laughs> oh my gosh. I felt affirmed. And exactly. I said, I have to continue. I have to yep. continue. So it's necessary, you know, feeling like, because when, imagine someone young discovering your screenplays or your writing or your films, you know, they feel seen, they feel represented, mm. they feel okay. Because I know when I was younger and when you were younger, we saw no representation in the media. <laughs> no Except way. for Sydney Poitier, right? Sydney Poitier is from the Caribbean. Uh -huh. I didn't know it when I was little, but, I, but then I discovered it when my mom said, oh, he's from the Caribbean. I was like, oh. Oh. oh, I've got to watch City Watch. Yeah. But that's, that's what we do, you know? We're like, oh, he's a Caribbean heritage. We've got to care, you know? So I, I definitely feel that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, as we've already discussed, like partly, you are a jack of all trades. You write, you direct, you produce, you are an advocate. How has it been being a woman of color, being in all of these different industries? How has it been being navigating your career path as a woman of color? It's never easy. Um, you're constantly faced with people questioning your right to be an artist. 100%. And I don't care. I figure if you're not, if you're clueless, if you're an artist, and you don't have an open viewpoint of what humanity is, that's on you, not me, you know? 100%. So, now, was that a mentality yeah. that came easily, like from the beginning, or was that something that you really had to struggle through and finally arrive at? Huh, that's a good question. You know, I didn't understand racism until I became an actress. Really? Oh, yeah. Because that was the time that I discovered people questioned my identity. Are you Black? What are you? Because your identity is integral to casting. Um, questioned the structure of my face. Did you get a facelift? Did you get your nose done? I was so baffled. I, of course, I was a naive 20 something, but I was hurt. And that, it's like, do you not know that we are all different and unique? 
so that's where I really felt the impact of, wow, they're putting me in a tiny box and I actually fill the planet and they can't do that. And it's a continual journey, but okay. There's some people who feel an artist thrives under pressure. And I've had pressure and I've accepted it and continued. So I guess there's a level of gratitude because it forced me to truly own my truth and my identity. But I don't want that for future generations. Yes. Yes. So I suppose the desire to form Conchell Productions was fueled by a desire to make a difference for future generations. Um, so. so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know that Eurocentric beauty standards are just mm -hmm. still, even to this day, even in how much diversity we have in the world, even just in America, mm -hmm. I know that Eurocentric beauty standards are what they are. So yeah. how has it been? I know that you are an actress. How has it been being able to represent the Caribbean diaspora when you are being an actress? How has it been being like that? You know, I've only had one opportunity to do that. I was blessed with the opportunity to play a character on Grand Army, yep. Antoinette Pierre. And that, oh my gosh, that was such a joy. Okay. I've never played a role speaking my mother's language. That's what I was gonna ask next. Yeah. yeah. How has that it was been so... having your mother tongue, like speaking it, representing it, you know, being who you are. You were casted, but you are who you were casted as. You know what I mean? You are well, a Creole speaking woman. Yes, but I'm not Haitian. Mm -hmm. I'm Haitian American. <laughs> <laughs> I am bicultural, mm -hmm. so um, I'm sure there are Haitian women out there saying, but I'm Haitian. Why didn't I get right. the role? Right, correct. I am Haitian American, and I love feeling the spirits of my ancestors come through me. That's amazing. It was, that... it was amazing. That's honestly, I love that. Just because somebody there's good the whole cast of grand army was so diverse i just know that there are going to be young kids growing up you know they haven't seen any representation before and they're gonna see you they're gonna see the rest of the cast and they're gonna mm -hmm. feel recognized exactly exactly and, then, and the women who played my daughters the whole cast who formed the haitian community because as you know with television you only really interact with the people you're in scenes with. Beautiful, beautiful people, beautiful so, people, yeah. Just even the cast and the crew, like how was your set experience there? Wonderful, I was in Canada. Mm -hmm. My first time in Toronto was shooting Grand Army. Fell in love with Toronto and it was a beautiful production team. They were so positive and affirming and and supportive. And it was such a joy. You know, let me tell you, sometimes in our journey, some experiences are filled with strife. Not this. It was lovely. And when I got to meet the other actors, they were always warm and pleasant. I wish them the best. I wish them the best. That's wonderful to hear, honestly, yeah. because, yeah. you know, you hear horror stories all the time. Yeah. About, yeah. especially about how actresses and actors of color are treated on set. So hearing that it was such an amazing experience that just, even, <laughs> if, it, even if it's, you know, just it's, it's one show, it's a step in the right direction, you know? And, and, and. The funny thing is, um, you recently SAG AFTRA had put out a new contract, and one of the tenets of the new contract is that all hair stylists 
have to have the ability to, to deal with hair of people of different cultures, right? They have to have the training to do so, which, you know, believe you me, um, the drama that women of color, women who don't have straight hair have on set when a hairstylist doesn't know what to do with their hair, it's real. Grand Army, hairstylists, all of them of the African diaspora. <laughs> Amazing. And they were fantastic. They were fantastic. <laughs> um, but I really, I, that moved me. I was like, wow, this producer really cares. Mm -hmm. This producer really gets it. Because if they could, it, it's not like it's purposeful. They're just getting talents. But if you're going to be having a cast, with many people of color and don't have hairstylists who know how to work with their natural hair. I mean, granted, I had a weave during the show, but the thing is my natural hair had to be dealt with and to feel safe in the chair. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no one sure you're gonna be taken care of. <laughs> oh my god, I could relax in the chair. Yeah, you, know you knew I mean? you were safe. You knew that they knew what they were doing. Exactly. And the makeup artists were all beautiful. It was just like everybody was beautiful. Caterer <laughs> was beautiful. I'm I'm allergic to so many different foods. And mm -hmm. there was a beautiful caterer, this amazing man of Dominican descent, who would literally bring me gluten-free little dishes it's like i got this i got you i got you i'm like oh and and the caterers for the meals it's like magalie we got you we got you gluten-free like oh <laughs> no feeling seen and like even those things matter it may seem small but it's big to the person who's experiencing them that's it's that's amazing to hear honestly because i know that even shows that claim that they care about diversity, you know, behind the scenes, they, they are not so good to their cast members. So knowing that the cast was diverse, the crew was diverse, stylists, hairdressers, makeup artists, everyone. The directors. I mean, <laughs> I was like, this is heaven on earth. Thank you, God. That is, <laughs> this is so delicious. I'm having such a blessed moment in my journey. That's amazing. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. So um, during the upcoming film festival, what are some things you're hoping to see there? Well, I do know for a fact we have some amazing films that we're considering. We closed submissions um, June 3rd and our film selection team, are, they're having a real difficult time because the work is so <laughs> amazing. But in addition to the short films, which are all award um, contenders, we are gonna be screening full length films, special screenings of lovely films. Uh, we're gonna have Madame Sarah by a Haitian director. And, oh dear, I have to look it up, I'm having a brain a brain exposure moment. Oh Lord, I should have had all these notes in place. So let, wow. me, let me tell you, let me give you that information because it's still a work in progress. Uh -huh. But as of now, mm -hmm. we have two documentaries, two amazing documentaries. Madame Sarah is an exploration of a community of women that have been part of Haitian culture since slavery times. And their job is to bring the goods from the farmland to the market. And they're a part of the society to this very day. And this man, I never knew about Madame Sarah until I saw the documentary. See, that's why I love film. Because it exposes so many of us to things that we knew nothing about. It just wakes up the society to nuggets of human truth. Okay. From Madame Sarah, we also have, um, we have three days of special screenings. You see, I'm about to read everything. With mm -hmm. Wonder, a documentary written and directed by Sharon Lewis. A beautiful piece that explores the journey of people of the LGBTQ community and their relationship with the church. Really moving, That's amazing. very moving, very important work. And we also have Devotion, 
written and directed by Dawn Wilkinson. And it's a piece that explores a, a little girl's journey finding identity in Canada. Um, her father was of his Caribbean heritage. Her mom was, was white. Her mother dies. And how does she navigate the world as this bicultural, biracial individual in Canada? And let me tell you, I can't wait to share these. And I've, and, and it's new to us. We didn't have special screenings last year. So every year we're bringing new content, creating new conversations. We're also gonna have amazing panel discussions and demos, as you know, <laughs> we're gonna have product <laughs> demos um, yeah. both from image imagine products and final draft and i'm really looking forward to that because you're gifting our filmmakers with a wonderful opportunity to use your okay. your software and my and, and i'm so thrilled that the whole audience is going to learn about your software so thank you thank you we're it's, just it's so much more that's going to be happening panel discussions artist chats after parties that's just and an award ceremony me, you can see me <laughs> smiling this entire time i just feel like the stories that are going to be told through these films are so important and mm -hmm. for us to be even a part of it through our demo and through being represented there we're proud of it we're so excited so to be a part of it because so think that Companies, organizations such as Conch Shell Productions are so essential to underrepresented groups. Like you would never hear about this in something that might be centered in Europe or centered in Los Angeles and Hollywood. You might you wouldn't have this platform to hear all of these stories. And you know, we are talking being represented through ethnicity, through race, through sexualities. So I just think that this in film festival is just a, an amazing and it's, it's it's a huge step forward in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I can't wait. And, and the other thing, it is all virtual. And this is an, a, a virtual event that is also an opportunity for socializing because our, our platform has these community rooms. We can hang out, get to know someone who lives in South Africa, someone who lives in Iceland, someone who lives anywhere on the planet because you're all on your computer and you have the freedom of choosing where you meet and chat. And that was my favorite feedback from everyone that they met people and they formed strong relationships that continued throughout the year. I was so touched because that was my goal connections, mm -hmm. relationships. So bringing the entire world together. That's, that's honestly amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today, Magali. It was you, an Magali. honor getting to interview you. Um, it's just amazing hearing more about this film festival and the importance and just how essential it is to have. Thank you. Thank you. We are excited here. We're excited to do our demo. We're excited to join <laughs> you guys. Uh, would you like to let everybody watching know where they can um, find the website to attend? www.conchelliff.com. Go on our site. Our tickets will go on sale later on next week. The pre-sale tickets are the juicy ones because they're more affordable. So don't be shy. Yep. Thank you so much. Awesome. The link Thank will you. be provided for everybody in the description of this video. And we hope to see everybody there. Remember, August 26th to the 28th. And the tickets will be on sale next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.